Tristina Dietz Elms, a mixed media artist, and I'm here to share with you today how to use a, the new Floor Artist oil paint markers from Pebio. In the stores, there's a brochure that goes with it that will show you the four different tip sizes, and I'm going to be showing you those today. There is a small tip for a two millimeter, a four millimeter bullet tip. This is my favorite. That's the eight millimeter chisel tip. And then you can see the 15 millimeter big top. This also shows you how to prime the, uh, the marker because you can hear it's a pump marker. So you have to pump it and prime the tip to start using it. There's a color chart in here. There are 18 colors right now. And it shows you the different tips that it comes in as well as some hints about how to use the markers. Another cool thing in this brochure is, look at this, there are some good pictures here that show you how the markers can be used. Um, you can find this information right on the internet. So if you go to pebio.com, you can get that information if you don't have a store near you that carries the markers. So let's talk about some surfaces that are good for the four artist markers. The four artist markers are a fine art oil based marker. They prefer a non porous surface in order to go over. However, you can use a porous surface. So I'm going to show you some of those different surfaces now and then describe them to you. First of all, there's a typical canvas that you can buy in your art supply store. So there's some white gesso that's already on this canvas when you buy it. That means the surface is sealed and it's ready to go. I could just start marking on it right away with the markers. And less expensive alternative is the canvas board. So I like these a lot too. You can buy these um, in bulk and they're super to practice on. And my favorite for practicing is the canvas pad. The canvas pad is actually something you can see I've been messing around on mine here. It's something that has sheets of already primed canvas in it. So this surface is already sealed and it's perfect and ready for me to start messing around with my markers on it. So again, that's a canvas pad. That's, I can't live without those. <laughs> um, besides the canvas pad, you can use the markers on glass or on metal. What I recommend though is that you wipe out down the glass or the metal with some rubbing alcohol first and that way your surface will be nice and clean and ready to take your um, markers. Now, I've had people ask me can you use paper with these markers and the answer is absolutely yes you can use paper with the markers. What you'll find with the markers on paper is that when you put the marker on a porous surface like this paper, um, it's going to soak in and then you won't have the shininess of the paint anymore. If you want the shininess of the paint, you wanna seal that paper up. So how do you seal the paper? Like we had spoken about before, you use your gesso or your black gesso. Um, and then any other kind of acrylic paint will also work. Or you can do collage. I love to do collage. So I get collage papers and I use a little gel medium and I put those on um, or any way that you like to do collage first. That way that's going to seal the paper and it's going to be ready to take your paint. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to use the markers. First I'm going to show you the four different tips of the markers. Um, you'll see this is a two millimeter tip so it makes a really nice continuous line just like that a smaller line then you've got your four millimeter both of these are bullet tips the two and the four so there's your four millimeter and then here is the chisel tip we look at that and then here is the big 15 millimeter I just love this especially the silver is just gorgeous but you see the coverage there and I'm working on one of those canvas pads that I told you about that I really like here's a trick on a quick way to open these markers because each one comes wrapped so I just twist the top like this and it opens the wrap and there you go quick and easy you'll notice that the tip is clear it's not primed with the color yet so make sure that you shake that marker up really well and then you're gonna pump it 
and you see that tip pump 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 like that usually I'll pump it a couple times shake it a couple times and then I'll hold it down and now you can start to see the paint come down into there so you see that in just a second it's going to be all the way down and you'll start to see it right there you go so now that marker is ready to go it's been primed and when I pick them back up again I give them a little shake and then pump and then start again you'll find that if you have them in heat and I live in Florida so there's a lot of heat what will happen is if I've had them in my car where it's hot and I pull them out and start to paint with them a little bit of extra paint will flow out from them having been hot so my recommendation is that you have some sort of paper or sheet off to the side that you begin your marker movement with and that way if there's any that's going to come out in a bit of a blop to begin with it's going to be on that sample paper and not on the artwork that you're starting with but again i find that in florida where it's hot now the four artist markers are an opaque painting marker but you'll notice just like with any marker that the light colors actually sometimes can um, have a dark color show through underneath them so I recommend that you create an exemplar for yourself if you want to know about the coverage so for instance when you have your dark blue marker here it covers completely any color underneath the yellow allows a little bit to come through the red mostly covers it and the metallics completely cover it so if you use a little bit of that black gesso and you put it on a canvas pad you will have some light and some dark and you can go over that then with your markers and see how much coverage you have there or you can do it as I did here and you can write a word and then write through the word and that'll give you an idea when you're doing your collage work or if you want to do line work underneath your markers what's going to show through and what's not now you can blend these markers directly like this so while it's wet I can blend the yellow with some of the blue and then you'll get your variations here I'm getting a little bit of aqua you can also blend with mineral spirits so I make sure that I use a brush that's appropriate for oil painting so this is a bristle brush and a paper towel and when I do the blending I just put a tiny bit of mineral spirits on it and blot it off on the paper towel so it's not too wet and then you can take it and go in and do your blending and get some amazing colors here going blended colors that's why when I first looked at the list and I said there were only 18 colors I was surprised but then when I discovered that I could blend all of these colors together to get all of my gradients then I understood all the colors that I ever will need are already in the list here's the blue one the dark blue so if I want to darken the color I can add a little bit of dark blue and you can see how that can blend in there too and I have the white so if I add a little bit of white in there if you want to get a, a blob of paint to come out if you take your marker and you hold it down like this you're gonna see that the paint is going to flow so then you'll have much more paint to work with so like I said you only want a little bit of the mineral spirits look at that color that's like a celadon green color it's absolutely gorgeous so you can just play and play and upgrade your color add tints and shades and get all kinds of blending going on with them if you add the mineral spirits it's going to take a longer time for them to dry the marker itself used um, on a surface will dry in five to 15 minutes depending on your temperature and humidity where you are but if you add your mineral spirits it's going to take longer to dry because the mineral spirits are going to um, uh, 
add that retard retarder to it. Um, what I usually do in Florida, because it's very humid here, is I will let it dry overnight and then right on top of it with other markers. However, um, I've been in Denver before where things almost dry as soon as they come out of the tube, um, so it dries much faster. You'll just need to experiment with it and see. Now, when I clean up my brushes, I use the mineral spirits to clean the brushes as well, uh, like that. If you want to travel with these markers, and I think they're amazing for doing plein air work because you saw right here, it took seconds to mix your colors together and to get different color variants. But isn't this a lot nicer to work with than having tubes of paint and loose paint everywhere um, with your oil paints or your acrylics? So I love these for you throw them in a bag and off you go. Um, just take your canvas with you and you are good to go. A tiny bit of mineral spirits. And here's an idea for the mineral spirits someone had mentioned to me, that you take your mineral spirits and you can put it in one of these water brushes. And then that way, if you wanna do your combining on the run without having to have a cup like this, you can simply put your mineral spirits inside this um, water brush and then use that for something to um, that'll work great on the go. Now I want to show you my favorite, oh, my absolute favorite <laughs> use of the paints, um, and I do this a lot, is dripping and spattering. So here was that piece of canvas where we had the white and the dark. Um, I'm just using this canvas um, board for the background, but I want to show you if you pump the paint, do you see how it flows? Oh my gosh. And the silver one just looks like absolute liquid silver when you do that. And then you also have a very controlled spatter. So if I do this, my paint isn't going everywhere. It's going where I want it to go. Um, and so this gives you much more control. I find for myself, for the dripping and the spattering, my favorite tip sizes are this eight millimeter chisel or the big one. If I want to get big drips, then I'll use the, uh, the large tip, the 15 millimeter tip. Another trick is if you already have the metal down, so you've put down your silver or your copper or your gold, and then you go back over it with a dark color, you're going to find that the even when this color is dry, it's going to come up and float above the color. So that gives you some gorgeous effects. Here are some other ones that I've done where you can see that the dark color, you have your metals and you get a modeling effect, which is absolutely gorgeous. Now, let me show you that on this marker, you can see here some of the, the metallic. So I always keep a piece of the canvas pad next to me and I clean off my marker tip like this. You'll find that also, especially when you use the yellow and you're doing blending, you're gonna need to clean off that marker tip so then you're back to your blue color. Now here's something I find fascinating. The black gesso is very matte, but when I use the black marker, the paint that's in the marker is very shiny. So you'll find that after it dries, you're gonna see a beautiful contrast between the background being matte and the marker being shiny, and I adore that effect. Notice I'm capping these after I'm done, so the recommendation is as soon as you finish, put the cap back on to help keep the paint um, fresh in the tip. Now I'm gonna show you some other examples of working with the marker. You can see here the small marker just lightly touching the surface. You get a beautiful thin line. And then the blending of the blue marker. I just think it's absolutely ethereal and gorgeous. Then this is a small piece that I did. If you watch my social media, you'll see I just used the brush and some of the paint in the background to create that watercolor effect. This is a piece of canvas pad and then use the markers on top of it afterwards. This is a true mixed media paint. So there's also here some oil pastel over top of it. I could go back over top of this with acrylic 
I could go back over top of it with a wash of watercolor. I could do um, uh, more oil paint out of a tube on top of it. So treat these as a true mixed media paint and layer it one on top of the other. Now also, one of my favorite mixed media paints is resin. So you'll notice that these markers work very, very well on top of the resin. So this is a piece of resin that I poured and watch this. You see how beautifully the marker writes on it? You can actually use the markers under the resin or over top of the resin and the resin does not affect it. It doesn't lift it or anything. Once you have put this marker on and let it dry, the resin goes on top of it beautifully. Now, if I've made a mistake and I wanna get rid of that for some reason, I simply will take a little bit of the mineral spirits and I can completely wipe this paint away so that there's no more of it that came from the marker. So I heard about someone who uses this on windows and they will draw their design on the windows and then when finished with the design, they'll go back with some mineral spirits or turpentine and they'll wipe it off of the glass. Then you clean it with your alcohol and you're ready to go again with a new design. Here's some more experimentation with the, you can see all the blending here and the writing over top. So once the back layer is dry, you can just write right over top of it. There's more blending. This is spattering that was done when the background was still wet. So you get a little bit of modeling or um, some diffusion when your background still has a little bit of, it, of the mineral spirits in it. And I really like that. It's almost a watery watercolor effect. This piece has acrylic marker put over top of the four artist marker. So I did the blending with the four artist marker and then went back in with my acrylic markers. So Really, don't be afraid. Just try, 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 experiment. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Here's another piece that has the resin in the background, and it's just layer upon layer of collage, paint, marker, and the markers I used were both the, um, Pebio has a new line of acrylic markers coming out, so it was the acrylic markers as well as the oil paint markers and on top of the resin and on top of the paint. Another of my favorite things to do is to use a lot of texture in my artwork. So you can see here, this is Pebio's sand texture gel. So it, this is the black version and it gives you lots of beautiful texture off the surface of your artwork. And look at that. So if I take this silver and I put it in to there. I can just skirt across the top of it and hit the top of the texture or I can really work it in and get the silveriness over all of that black and it really just pops against the background. And here's another piece that I've done as a base. Again, this is on a canvas pad and it's as a base for a piece that I'm going to do with oil paints. So the paint markers gave me an opportunity to get my background laid in before putting oil paints over top of them. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, please leave comments down in the bottom. I will leave some comments below that show you some of the retail stores and some of the websites where you can buy these four artist markers because they're fabulous. So have fun and here come a few pictures of some of the work that I've done with them. <laughs>